The Center for Continuing Education, CCE, is a State Bar of California MCLE approved provider. CCE certifies that this program is approved for one hour of MCLE credit. CCE, the Center for Continuing Education presents Patent Fundamentals for Non-Patent Attorneys, presented by Stephen A. Nielsen of Larkspur, California. Steve Nielsen is a founding partner of Allman and Nielsen based in Marin County, California. Mr. Nielsen is a U.S. registered patent attorney with many years of experience in obtaining patents and achieving favorable results in federal court in the field of intellectual property litigation. He is the current chairperson of the intellectual property section of the Marin County Bar Association. Mr. Nielsen received his JD in 1987 from Bolt Hall, University of California at Berkeley, and also holds a BA in computer science. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming here. I hope to put on a uh, interesting and informative uh, presentation on patent fundamentals for people who are not registered patent attorneys. Uh, my goal is to uh, convey five concepts to you. Um, what is a patent? What might be patentable in 2010? Uh, what are the important deadlines that you might want to be able to uh, convey to your clients so you don't blow any statutes of limitation. There's just a couple deadlines you need to know so when a client comes in uh, you don't do anything to harm their interests. Uh, then I want to talk about what patent work can you perform even though you're not a registered patent attorney. Then conversely uh, what patent work or patent punishment as I call it uh, is reserved for registered patent attorneys. Um, First of all, what is a patent? A patent, if you're lucky enough to get one, looks like this. It's issued by the United States government. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was our first uh, uh, patent examiner and uh, patent commissioner. And so it's issued by the United States of America. It comes from an organization called the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And what this is, it's a right to exclude others from manufacturing, importing, or selling items within the United States. It's not a right to make things, it's a right to exclude others. Um, and it excludes uh, things such as a product, a machine, a composition of matter, um, a plant, a design, a machine, anything that's, quote, covered by the patent. Now, the next important issue to understand is what is covered by the patent. What's covered by the patent are the contents of the claims, and in a, in, in a patent, the claims are always found at the very end of the document. Um, so you have this right to exclude others. Um, sometimes uh, many good patents are for uh, compositions of drugs or new um, treatments. So you may need FDA approval, or sometimes a patent is an improvement upon an existing product, and if the existing product is still in its patent, uh, the inventor may need to get a license uh, to practice his invention. Uh, patents in this country are uh, good for 20, 20 years from the filing date, uh, which is in parity with other countries, as our patent office tries to um, be in line with other countries uh, so that we have a more unified system throughout the world. So if your client is lucky enough to have a patent, he or she can stop imports uh, from people bringing the covered product into this country, um, and they can stop the domestic manufacture or sale of products covered by the patent. So there is no international um, patent. Each, if you want a patent in Germany, you have to go to Germany, file, and you get some document. It looks like this. So each country has uh, their own patent office. Each country wants to get their fees, and each country has their own uh, unique uh, quirks uh, about granting uh, patents. So people come in, they want an international patent. There's no such thing as that. Um, sometimes a patent, a, a client will come in, and they'll have a, a gadget or an invention, and they'll go on Google, and they'll look for uh, some patents, and they'll find a picture just like it and they'll say, oh, am I going to get sued for making this? Well, you need to tell your clients that 
The patent only excludes what's covered, again, in the claims. The claims are found at the end of the document, so don't be discouraged. Um, if a picture of the product is in an existing patent or, or described in general, again, it's just the claims that your client needs to worry about if they're worried about infringing on um, a product. And what's interesting, with uh, Google patents, clients can do their own searches and they find a lot of interesting things and they have a lot of interesting questions uh, to go through about the various products that they may have invented or that they want to invent. Um, so number two, what might be patentable in 2010? Various clients will come into your office and they'll show you a gadget and they'll ask, is this patentable? And probably your best answer if you're not a registered patent attorney is to say, go ask a registered patent attorney. It's hard to say unless you're doing this day in and day out because the law changes. But if they press you, you may want to give them some, some general guidelines so you don't get their hopes up uh, too high. Generally, in the last five, 10 years, patents are more difficult to obtain than they were uh, in the past, uh, there's sort of a public outcry about excluding others from inventions that might be considered obvious. And uh, some people find patents to uh, have an anti-competitive effect. Other people really believe, as I do, that patents help reward innovation. Uh, people spend money in R&D and they get the patent and they profit from it and then they have more money to reinvest. But we're not gonna solve that issue here. So, but the trend is things are more difficult to patent now than they were in the past. So uh, the first three considerations you may want to tell your client about is that a invention uh, process material has to be new. So that has two different types of meanings. One is your client cannot have offered it uh, for sale or used it in public uh, for more than one year before your initial patent filing. And we'll talk about that more in the deadline uh, section. So it has to be new. Uh, they can't be using it for five years and then file for a patent. Uh, then the item has to work um, or be useful. It doesn't have to work perfectly, but it has to have utility. And there are plant patents, utility patents, and design patents. And by utility, it has to have some value to it. Now, fortunately, the threshold is very low. There was a famous case involving some semiconductors that didn't work. And during the prosecution of the patent, the patent attorney said, well, the utility is it can be used for landfill. You can fill things up with it. And the patent office said, no, that's, that's too low. It has to be better than landfill. But the standard isn't much better than landfill. Uh, so it has to have some utility. It doesn't have to work perfectly. Then here's what we're going to spend some time uh, discussing, the uh, methodology of the invention has to be unobvious. In other words, if someone were to come in and say, I have a, a pencil with an eraser on top, the patent office would say, well, that's an obvious combination of known components. One skilled in the art would have thought about putting an eraser on top of a pencil and calling that a product. So what your client needs to do is think about how their invention is not obvious to one reasonably skilled in the art. And the big case on this is called KSR versus Teleflex. Teleflex. That case involved a, um, a sensor on a gas pedal, electronic sensor on a gas pedal. Um, the gas pedal would be pushed down. It would send um, a control signal to the carburetor or fuel injection, open it up uh, through the sensor. So we, we know about sensors. We know about pedals. Somebody got a patent for that. Uh, it went to court, and the court said, no, that's an obvious combination of known components. We're not going to uphold a patent for a gas pedal on a sensor. Um, yeah, okay. uh, so the, the case law is in a state of flux. In the next couple of years, we're going to get a more definitive answer as to what is obvious and what isn't. Um, the guidelines are if one reasonably skilled in the art would consider trying this particular invention, and a good example is, uh, 